to my channel. <laughs> Merry Christmas! I mean New Year's. I haven't uploaded in about a month. I've been kind of, you know, enjoying the holidays. Family came over. Um, I met up with some people. I was kind of, I was out there doing things. I met up with Skaya um, in Little Tokyo and she gave me this box of McDonald's toys from Korea. I am like obsessed with it because, you know, I've got my entire McDonald's corner in my room so it was absolutely perfect. I was just so excited. We're back, baby. We're back this year with a new video. This one is a garage kit process video. It took me like a month and a half to make but I am very proud of it. Um, this was a commission that someone had, you know, reached out to me and wanted to send me this garage kit. So I was like, okay, let's do it. I'll paint it, I'll build it. And I recorded the entire process. Well, I recorded what I could. But if you'd like to see the process of me just kind of going in there, putting together this kit, um, this Lucky Star kit, then feel free to just keep watching. <laughs> Alright, here she is. This is a Lucky Star 1-6 scale garage kit that was released at Wonder Festival in 2008. I opened her up and this is what was inside. We have the instruction kit which tells you how to put her together as well as a reference photo and inside are the pieces itself. Here you can see there are a lot of resin tabs and just extra resin leaking out that are definitely going to need to be cut off or sanded down. After I looked over and inspected all her pieces, I'm going to get her prepared for her bath. I'm going to pull out a degreaser and I'm doing this so I can get off any of the mold residue that is left because if any of it's left on, it's going to make this task of painting her nearly impossible. So I'm slipping her in here, I'm using simple green, and I'm just going to let her kind of simmer in this little stew for a couple hours. I leave her overnight and then I brush off any leftover residue. So this is the segment where I read questions, fans submitted questions. A couple weeks ago, I asked you guys if there were any questions you had about garage kit making in general that you wanted me to answer. Um, because a lot of you guys are beginners, so I wanted to give you guys my expertise advice as someone who's only ever done two garage kits ever. Take what I say with a grain of salt. Hey, you know, it might help. I, I don't know. Here it is. Best places to find garage kits. A lot of people ask me where I got this kit because I've been posting the progress um, up on my Instagram. If you want to kind of keep up with me, I post a lot on my story, so that's there. Um, best ways to find garage kits. I don't know. Um, I did not purchase this garage kit. Um, both the garage kits I worked on were commissions, so I did not buy them. It was supplied to me by the client. I've heard um, that there are great places to find on online. Bai Japan is always a good one. Um, E2046, which is a really controversial place. If you are getting into garage kits, you're gonna stumble upon a recast. So there's recast sites that basically will sell recasts of garage kits. A recast is basically when they take a garage kit already in existence and they just mass produce it. This is usually not with the original artist's consent, so it's frowned upon a little bit in the garage kit community. Although it's really up to your just personal opinions on the matter on what you want to buy. Just keep in mind that that is um, a recast site. HTTP LOL 200 says, are kits rare and expensive to get? Yes and no. Some of them are. It really depends what kit you're looking for. If you're looking for a kit from the early 2000s by a sculptor, probably hasn't made anything in a very long time, is only active on Japanese Twitter. And if you're specifically looking for a character that is from a very niche anime, again, also from the early 2000s, or if it's an OC, Good luck. <laughs> yeah, some kits are insanely rare to get. A really big misconception about garage kits is that it's a cheaper alternative to just collecting figures. I would say the complete opposite. And not only that, but after you get the kit, you still have to pay for the supplies to even build the kit. There's a sense of accomplishment when you do finish something, which I do really like about garage kits. Now that she's all clean, I am just going to scrape away and cut off all the tabs and get off a lot of the excess kind of pieces of the mold that were just in the way. We want these pieces to be nice and clean so we can get her ready for prepping. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we have that out of the way, it's time for the hard part to commence. I'm going to start pinning her. I actually had my dad help me with this part because I absolutely hate the pinning aspect of garage kits. Pinning is pretty tricky for me personally because you have to let the holes match up and make sure that you don't drill through any of the pieces either, so you want to be careful. The brass rods I'm using in this one are slightly thicker than the ones I've used before because this kit is 1 6 scale which means she's a lot bigger than the average 1 8 scale figure. One of the great things about this kit was that it actually had some holes already drilled into it, so pinning her was a little more easy. Here you can see where I have the brass rods laid out, and you can also see some gaps that are already in the figure. I definitely find pinning the most tedious part because it's kind of like putting a puzzle together, but once you get it, it should look pretty good standing up. And then I had to fill in the gaps. I really don't like seeing any gaps, so I wanted to cover the ones in her hair because they were just separate pieces, so I filled it up with putty and some epoxy clay. For putties, I stick with Tamiya. I have three different types. I have the white type, the basic type, and I have the epoxy putty. All three work for filling in gaps, and all of them are really useful. So after my epoxy putty had cured, I still had to go in and sand everything down until it was as smooth as I could possibly get it. I use various grits of sandpaper, starting from 220 all the way up to 1500 grit. Keep in mind that the lower the number, the more abrasive the sandpaper will be. I didn't really film myself sanding anything, but just know that you want to take any safety precautions because resin dust is really toxic, so make sure you have a respirator and some masks on hand when you do sand. Super Cooperella asks, how do you paint smaller details? Do you use small brushes or pens? So I would never use a pen just for like a personal standpoint. I don't like the feeling of felt tip pens. I don't like the feeling of pens on anything other than paper. So if I were going to do the smaller details on a figure, I'd straight up just do, do it with like a micro paintbrush. It doesn't really matter the brand. I get them at Michael's. Uh, very small nail brushes will also do, you know, like the ones they use for doing your nails. I personally wouldn't recommend pens, but that's just, again, for my personal taste. I just feel most comfortable when I'm in control of a paintbrush rather than a pen. I'm just going to go to FM as, what are good sources for inspiration for beginners? Um, I have garage kit catalogs that I really like to look at. I like to look at the paint jobs, I like to look at the sculpts because I also sculpt figures. I like to kind of just look at all of it. It motivates me to want to make stuff, so I would suggest looking through catalogs. They're like a fun little time capsule to look through. Also, if you got the good old Pinterest, there's tons of Pinterest boards you can check out. I'm pretty sure you'll find something that gives you inspiration. All right, back to the kit. So after it was already completely sanded and everything looked good, I primed it with Mr. Super Clear, then went in with some white spray paint just to make sure everything was a solid white. I highly recommend Mr. Super Clear. I've been using it for literally every project I've ever done. It's a great primer. And then for the paint, I'm just using a spray paint I got at my local hardware store. I also recommend getting some clips and a clip base. This just makes painting in 360 angles a lot easier and you can get a more cleaner paint job done. Now that everything was primed and prepped, it was time for the magic to happen. This is definitely my favorite part of the entire process and I just can't wait to get into it. Y'all need to go says what type of paint do you use? and how many layers. So I am not very picky with paint. I get like the craft store paint, like Apple Barrel. <laughs> I use Basics. It's literally called Basics. Um, that's one of my favorite paints. Don't really have a reason. I just like the tube. A new one I kind of started using for this kit specifically, I use the Vallejo. I think it was like the Me their Mecca line. I used that for the skin color. This was just because it's kind of a hassle for me to constantly mix up skin color because I use it the most when I'm doing kits. If you just want a skin color already ready to go, um, I would recommend Vallejo. I actually really liked it. There's a hair in my mouth. And in terms of how many layers, it depends how much paint thinner you used when it came to painting. So if you used a little, it's gonna take less time. If you use a lot, it's gonna take a lot of layers. So um, for me personally, I <laughs> accidentally used a lot of paint thinner when it came to certain aspects of this kit. So it took a while to dry and it took a lot of, you know, just going back and back and over. It was just, it was the worst. But the thing with the paint thinner I used is that it was a lot thicker 
than just using water. So honestly, it wasn't that many layers. I would say four to five max. So I realized after I had painted the skirt, I needed to add the white lines. So I did it a little out of order, but I grabbed some masking tape and got to work on that. Using an X-Acto knife, I cut out very thin, long strips of masking tape to apply to the skirt and the collar and the sleeves. This is just me taking off the masking tape that I put around the stripes. This might be the part I struggled with the most because I had to go back and pretty much clean these stripes completely. I could not get the paint to lay on flat. It would always seep through my masking tape every time, so that kind of sucked. <laughs> Once I had that, I cleaned up the stripes and made sure all of the pieces were nice and opaque. The paint job was pretty simple, but I still went back just to make sure that everything was as nice and clean as it possibly could be, and I did some last minute detailing work. Now here's the part I'm sure everyone wants to know, because this is my favorite part. It's painting the face. Exo Jasmine asks, are there any tips for painting the face? I can never get the lines to be that good. I joined a trinket club a while back and it was specifically for these like tiny little trinkets and when I got them I would paint them. It, I did it to get like more used to handling a smaller paintbrush and honestly I think it worked. You know now that I've gotten used to it I feel more confident and I feel like confidence is the real key to painting the faces of a figure. You wanna make sure you are going in with a single stroke or that you're really just pushing through there. You don't wanna second guess yourself when you're painting the face. Even if you mess up, keep going. If you do mess up, you can always clean it up. You know, you always wanna have an extra bit of the skin color paint with you. So you can go back in and you can clean up around the edges. But you know, in order to really get those lines, you just wanna go for it. Some other tips I can offer when painting the face is that if you struggle with shaky hands, try holding your breath in when you do a stroke. That will help reduce your hand shaking. You also wanna make sure the paint that you're using is either very watered down or it's thinned out a lot with paint thinner. If you want the paint job to look nice and flat, you're gonna have to do it very patiently in small, very thin layers every single time. Also, I apologize for my hair being in the shot every single time. I thought I had the camera angled a little better, but turns out I didn't. And then here I am just adding the highlights to her eyes. Another fun tip is that I like to use light brown for the eyebrows and the eyelids. I feel like it adds some color dimension to the face. And there's her face, all nice and pretty. I also added some gloss and shine to her eyes and her mouth just to give a little more of a finished look. I think it looks really good. While making this kit, I ended up re-watching all of the Lord of the Rings films, as well as the Narnia trilogy. Fantasy really pulled me through this month. Now that your pieces are painted, you're going to want to seal the paint with a top coat. Here I'm using Mr. Hobby top coat. So now it was time to reassemble the puzzle and glue all the pieces together using two-part epoxy glue. You're gonna wanna take your time when gluing the pieces together and make sure that they fully cure. I let each piece kind of cure for around 24 hours before I pick it up again. After your pieces feel nice and secure, it's time to put her together. She should slip right in and then you're done. Your garage kit is fully finished. Now that she's done, let's take a look at her. Well, now that she's done, I'm honestly really proud. I've only done a couple garage kits, so I'm really happy with the progress I've made. I definitely feel like I still need to practice a lot more, but I think she looks a lot like her reference photo. I think the colors look really good, and I'm especially proud of her face. I think her face turned out amazing, and I am just so proud of that. Um, but now she's ready to be packed off and sent to her new home. All right, friends, um, looks like that's the end of the video. If you stayed for the whole video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I promise I'll have more things out soon. Um, I have a lot of new content ideas for the new year. Um, I'm going to branch out a little more. I really want to do video essays, so 
I have had my eye on a little wizard for the past like couple years that I've been thinking of maybe putting a little spotlight on. I don't know. Like, subscribe, follow my Instagram. All right, have a lovely rest of the month. I hope you guys enjoy your new year and peace out. Flip the raps, flip the trap, flip the raps, flip the trap. Flip the raps, flip the trap, flip the raps, flip the trap, flip the raps, flip the trap.